here to play. It's G2 Esports taking on big, a BO5 with a map advantage for the Frenchman. Who's going to take this series? Let's find out. Yeah, pistol round already underway, and Twitch chat makes some noise. It doesn't really work when uh, when there's no crowd, but you know we'll give it a go. Keto going to start off over here towards B ramp, while the rest of the gang they're all slipping their way over towards A. Now G two, they've gone very heavy in towards middle early on in this round. There's a three man hold here for G two. Big aren't going to grace mid with their presence, though. They're sneaking up through a ramp, slowly but surely. And for Amanek, he hasn't heard anything yet that would lead him to believe there's players here. The advantage to having three players grouped up in mid like this is that the rotations are going to be very, very fast. So the moment that Amanek does get some information to go off of, he's able to call for these rotations. But G2, they've pushed into mid. They've started to get aggressive here. And they might be allowed to come in pretty quickly on this flank because now the utility is raining into this A bomb site. And Ooh. while Jax has rotated safely, the rest of the gang, they're coming in on this rotate down through middle. Amanek spamming this smoke, but he's not able to find anyone. The bomb's going to go down here. Kenny now arriving from this mid lurk. There's three players holding ramp though, and Kenny does get taken care of by Centares. It's a four on four in the post flood. Yeah, retakes on, and now the advantage back for G2 with a flash in. They can get on this bomb. They have a kit available. That smoke has bit, uh, left a big gap, a big area open. So G2 needs to prioritize getting the kills before they stick that defuse. Keto's backing up. I love this passive play from Big, but it's going to get them caught, trapped in the back. Hunter with another. Uh, the defuse is happening again for the second time. Tizian can't stop it, and Jax has the cover. Great shot from Jax, finding two, and G2 will find the pistol round. Strong start from them, right? A retake set up. Luckily enough, a fast flank for Kenny. And I mean, he gets a kill here, but Santaras, he should be covering this one. Uh, Searson goes out or goes out on a limb, and there was a player there to deal with Kenny. You've got to wonder if Searson doesn't go for the peak. That probably goes a lot better for Big, but nice retake and full money now in the second. Big are going to force, as they often do after planting on that pistol. Once again, they're leaning down here towards ramp early on, but big, they, they've kind of shown us already that they're going to take this map pretty slowly, right? They're not going to be playing with this fast pace behind them. Searson, going to get the tag there with the scout onto Amanek, and that's a bit of return damage on the back of the, uh, the earlier damage that Searson took from the utility. Amanek and Hunter, they're just going to fall back more passively into this site. They actually leave Hunter behind the uh, the sandbags at the top of ramp. But there is a Molotov on Tabson, so do be sure to bear that in mind. While this is happening, Jax is going to deal with Tizian over here in middle. And this Molotov is going to force Hunter out into the open. That's going to present a four on four back to big. As they now look to get stuck into this A site. Yeah, the scout's been tagged from the early utility damage. Amanek, who laid that down, is still low, but luckily the kill is there for Jax. Trade through the smoke. Big, trying to scavenge guns on this bomb site. But Kenny's going to jump up on the boost. Perfect timing. Catches Tapson with his back turned. And Big, they're going to try and focus on the plant. G2 can't stop it, but they can stop Big from getting around here. A retake available. Lots of util for Nexa. If he can get that nade in, Zantares is still stuck on the site. And if he knows that, it could be huge. But it goes forward short does nothing. Zantares with some damage. Was, uh, denied by Kenny. Kito with a shot. And he's stuck in the clutch. He can't do it. G2 with a nice second round take in. It gets a bit dicey. But G2 play their cards right. Right. They don't overcommit, they wait, they allow the bomb to go pl get planted for big, and then they defuse as a unit. Exactly how you should be doing it on Vertigo, right? You don't want to just run down that planter, despite them being so close to you. The wall of smokes is very, very good for big. And yeah, like you said, not, not a fast round, no fast rounds here for big so far. They want to work this map control and throw executes, and uh, they don't want G2 to know what they're doing. Running up really anywhere on this map is going to be extremely loud, and G2 are going to hear your intention. So. Big trying to deny information, but once again are denied position for the deep smoke and the Molotovs that land in front of it. Yeah, this round's looking to get laid to rest pretty quickly by G2. They're only up against the pistols, so there wasn't really much riding on it, but Big, they, they were hoping to at least get away with a bit of damage in this round. Next, the spots these players aggressing over here towards B, and he's going to make quick work of them. Ah, there we go. No, no, not quite. There's a nade at least, but Zatares does D Kenny out of the round. The nades brought him down low, and this wrap 
from. Amanek should get the kill secured. He's going to pick it up. G2, they'll get this 3-0 and start, but now the investment is looming for the big boys. Yeah, that's what we've been waiting for, right? I really wanted Vertigo in this series. Obviously, we have four maps potentially, so yeah, it was, uh, it was likely going to happen, but... You know, this is a map that G2 have been, you know, pulling up since its uh, initiation into the pool. And we've seen them develop and learn and change and adapt over the course of, you know, Pro League, RTR, these last three months of play, including DreamHack as well. So it's nice to see Big, who have also uh, loved this map, get to go head to head against a clearly, you know, very strong Vertigo, te Vertigo team that knows what they're doing. Kenny, he's fire construction area, gonna fight with the orb, but they're already pushed up very close. He realizes, but too late. Still hits a two for one, taps him down low. Kenny with a chance to escape, but he's trapped. Big pushing into this B side, trying to split it quickly. Kenny does have support. Nexus is pivoting like a genius, getting kills on the ramp and then killing construction players. Kenny survives for more, longer than he should, and now he shouldn't as Searson comes in on the flank. Big in a two on two with a bomb in the sight. Yeah, considering this is a two on four, this is a huge turnaround for Zintares and Searson. Searson's holding aggressively over here towards CT. And while this is happening, Amanek is wrapping up through B ramp. Searson gonna nail the shot onto Hunter. And Zintares is there at the very, very end as well to find this first on the board for big. It was a scary start to the round with Kenny getting away with kills, right? Landing that little collateral almost over in middle. Removing a man early on, it almost slips away from big in a pretty dominant fashion. I will say, do be sure to keep your eye on Nexa over at this B bomb set. We got to speak to him a lot back at uh, the Pro League and the Road to Rio. And, and you know, when these changes came into B, he was he was explaining to us how he loves it now, right? Like he used to say, playing that B site got awful lonely, wasn't really much fun. Well, he's a bit of a master at it. Yeah. Definitely a good job in that round, but a nice smoke from being at the back of the bomb site. It actually lands behind the gens and essentially cuts off CT spawn. Uh, Kenny gets stuck behind it, and it, you know just because of the smoke there, it loses his vision, and he doesn't see Searson coming in on a late mid wrap. That's information that G2 probably want in the future, and they've gone for a double mid setup here. I like the default for G2 on the CT side, right? Two A, two mid, one B, and you can rotate very fast on the CT side of this map. Searson wall banging for a player pushed down towards the short side. Just really hammering at home, but no one on the other side of that wall. Hunter's holding towards the top of A. Big, once again, a very slow default where they just hold early and wait for G2 to get aggressive. That's not going to be the case. G2 are not pushing anything. Tizian using Amanex Molotov against him in the middle. Going to push Kenny off of the construction. But this is a good spot for Kenny. Able to hide uh, from, from any T's behind the sandbags and pop out with only your head exposed. The rest are bigger walking up towards A right now, but we have a late mid split coming through too. Oh yeah, Jackson Kenny have actually dealt with the first man going in. Tizzy was a little too far ahead for Keto to trade, and now the rest of G2 have quick rotated into this A bomb site, and they actually just start rushing the smoke. Jax takes down Tabson. Searson gonna deliver here. There's a player going up and over onto the boost, and that's Nexa who deals with everybody at the very, very end. He's having a great game right now, is Nexa. Eight and one on the scoreboard. And in every one of these rounds that G2 have been able to pick up, he's been delivering multi-kills. Uh, yeah, something Pim said on the desk was, you know, this this series contains two of the best fragging in-game leaders we have in Counter-Strike right now. That being Taps and the Nexa, like great individual performances from these guys. And, you know, players that have, uh, you know, moved into the in-game leader role over time and really, really picked it up well. Nexa, I, I love how G2 will always accept the chaos. If Big want to get chaotic, G2 will get chaotic. They'll push the smokes, they'll jump up on the boost, they'll take the fight. And we have like, you know, Big trying to set up their system gets two with the orb, and then G2 just rush him down. They know that they, if they give him room, that's a big problem. So they just overwhelm him, overwhelm him and don't let that orb get any more. Kenny's now got one of his own and he's firing off down towards the ramp room. So B, already three alive. Make that one, Keto, bottom of B. And G2 looking like a fifth round, likely. They can keep it flawless, that'd be nice. And that's exactly what they'll do. Money starting to build here for the G2 camp and control certainly taken on this CT side.
I want to see Big Speed up the pace. I want to see them go for a default round with you fast play A and, and have one player late lurk mid or something like that. We haven't seen Big play off of their spawns at all in this game. They've always set up slow and that's allowed Cheetah to every round take this ramp control, do what they're doing now, throw those deep smokes. One player tries to push ahead of them, but Amanek is dueling and he does a lot of damage through it. These SMGs churning it big, but yet to get a kill. Tapson's going to try and get out into middle, but Kenny and his little AWP reside in this area of the map. And so Tapson gets dropped. Searson going to come back in with an equalizer. Right now, it's the orbs popping off in the early game. However, look at Hunter. He's living up to his name. He's gone through this smoke down at the bottom of ramp, and he's now got the information that ramp is clear. This is huge for G2. It affords them an extra man to rotate over to this B bomb site. And actually, Amadek's going to come on in and join Hunter on this wrap. Tizian, who was holding for the first man in, does get the kill, but will he be ready for Amadek? 50 seconds and big on the back of getting that kill. They're like, all right, boys, let's go back. You know, they just saw us going to B. They know what's going on, but I killed the guy flanking. However, there was two players pushed up down through ramp and Amanek is only good for one more. Keto and Searson. These boys started off as sprouts, but now they've got to grow something wonderful into this round. Kenny going to try and hold the line, get smoked off, and he pushes through. He's looking to take the fight to big and Kenny nails the shot. It's all on to Keto in the 1v2. Yeah, huge clutch for the young gun, but Kenny's going to rush him down. And this is what I talk about, Harry, when I say the chaos for G2. They don't care. They're not scared. They know they're the favorites in this series, and they're going to take every opportunity to show Big that, not give them the room to move. And I think, you know, underestimating is a, is a common word we use in Counter-Strike, especially when an underdog such as Big makes such a run in this tournament. Maybe teams underestimated them on the, on the way, but no, no chance. G2 are going to do that in the grand final. They know why Big is here they've lost a map to them in a series that they won and they're here to take another dominant victory 6-1 lead big ball up again no orp on this round they're going to set up towards a once again fast deep smoke from g2 has just been so consistent every round thrown down amanek usually has another run short and big not once have taken a ramp early they've just been denied position after position and this is no different The thing that's so scary is because G2 are feeling so confident right now that the, the, the moment these like slow A rounds are coming through from big, G2 have already explored the other avenues on the map. In this round, they'd already pushed up into mid and they've dropped the smoke, but they've been peeking past it. So now they, they kind of realize, well, there's nobody middle. We haven't heard anything at B. And so the moment this utility comes in towards the A site, there, there's no... Uh, there's, there's nothing discreet about it. G2 know this is the A play because they've already cleared mid. They're listening out of B. They didn't see anyone. And now they've dropped the bomb here at the B bomb site, leaving big in a three on five. This time they will be afforded the bomb plant at a oh. bare minimum, but Hunter lines them up and knocks them down. Searson gets dropped through the smoke and G2 7-1 in their favor. Five players staying alive in that retake. And this is just disgusting right now. Yeah. G2, like we were wondering if it was going to be the usual nerves for this squad because it feels like, you know, when the games get important, when they really matter for G2 and there's like, you know, a championship on the line, that's where the cracks have sometimes started to show, right? And, and right now, I don't know, man, they're looking real fired up. Huge Big are going to call in this tactical pause and justifiably so. Huge mistake for Big in that round, right? Keto gets shot through the smoke, which is unfortunate. And then Tabson goes for a wide plant, which uh, th that plant is good because it allows Big to play ramp and not like have to rush the site and take control and deal with that smoke spam that eventually loses in the round. But uh, yeah, Tabson tries to plant and Amanek jumps over boost. A very ballsy play, a very risky play, but he kills Tabson. And why? Big, they're not covering. They let they get Tabson in the site and suddenly all three of them fall back to watch short, to watch ramp. No one was even close to looking at the bomb planter. And so there's zero cover there. G2, they drop another one, they have a five on three, and then they just start spamming smokes and they close the round. So that's a that's a mistake from Big, a rare one, right? And well, right there, that's gonna lose them the round, putting them back to pistols. G2, they must be loving this right now, Harry. Last time G2 played a BO5, was against Astralis. G2 managed to get eight rounds in an entire BO5 grand final series. And it must be nice trying to do the same back to a different opponent now. Oh, it's getting dicey though. Guns are being picked up by Big as they trade kills up on this A ramp. A fast approach through the smoke and it works wonders. 
As is often the case, right, no matter how successful these ramp takes have been, G2, if you look at the minimap, you'll see a problem. And that is that there's three players here. And so, Big, if they do decide to continue this commitment into A, they're, they're walking into all the remaining guys for G2. Amanex over here at short side, and he's spotted Tizian. That's a little bit more for G2 to go off of. Big, they're still committed. They're still looking for this kill. And Zantares will get the trade, so we're into this two-on-two. Yeah, chance for Big to make it interesting, but will they commit to A or go back? Zantares is checking a flank, but... Not committing to it. Tabson pushed up. And really, this is a hard one. This is one where, you know, from a surface level, you might just want to send Zantaris in first to trade. But, yeah, 3 HP. Luckily, they're going into the orb. And so it's a one-shot regardless. Kenny, though, he know he's known to hit these shots. Always oh, looking the wrong way. The barrel could elude him. The timing is everything. And the cross is there. Oh, what a missed shot. That's not... That doesn't make sense. Kenny is looking right at them and neither shot connecting. A third flashed out. He can't find it. Now G2 have to retake. This is not the round they wanted. This is not the round they needed, but it could be around the big steal from underneath G2. Yeah, Tabson holding the short angle. Smoke rains in, but Tabson's already up and past it and he's dropped Kenny. This leaves Nexon out in a 1v2. Does retrieve the kit from Kenny's body. Taps the bomb. This is going to bait a peak eventually. Oh. And Zantares swings on up to take the fight. Big, they snatch away that partial investment. They managed to find success on the back of the A plate in spite of walking in to what was the three on three at this A bomb site. Yeah, excellent work from Big. Really good reaction and the slowdown there as well, right? All that does is separate the two players from, uh, from G2, which, you know, doesn't eventually get Big any kills, but knowing you have a two on one there forces Kenny to play passive and allows you to get the bomb pawn. The bomb pawn is what allows Big to relax into a nice setup and get the job done. But G2, they're angry, they're furious, and they are sending grenades down the ramp once again. One of smokes, HEs, you name it. A bit of damage done, but Hunter will perish, or not perish, burn rather in the Molotov. Sisson on 10, but he's got the orb, so he just has to back off while this utility is still available for G2. Try and count the grenades you're seeing and figure out when it's safe to cross. Though it's never really safe to cross with these Frenchmen on the other side. Sisson, he sees the jump. He's hit the shot earlier with a scout, didn't get the kill, but this one, there, yeah, that's perfect. Damanek, he had it coming to him, Harry. And now big, a man advantage. It feels like the, one of the first times in this map that Big have sat back in a 5 on 4 that has gone untraded. In fact, that's the first opening jewel of this game for Big. Ah, so there's a reason it feels that way. <laughs> and that's because it's it is that way. Kenny's gonna go aggressive over towards ramp, and oh no, Zatara's isn't paying him any attention, but there's Searson getting some revenge. However, Ooh. Kenny is also the uh, the man out for blood over here in the A site. Nexa follows up with another on Taquito, and while this is happening, you got sneaky little Jax coming in on the ramp flank. He shut down this bomb, and with it, any hope of winning the round. Tabson, 1v3, 15 seconds. He needs to get a flurry of kills and retrieve the bomb, and that's just not happening. G2 secure themselves an eight they continue to build this lead up something that i think is like just still so impressive to me is that nexa is, is tied first on the scoreboard at 12 and 2. he's the b site anchor and there's there, there's been there's been one b play in this entire half so far from big so he's just coming in on these rotations and getting so much value yeah. I, I, I'm honestly kind of like lost for words. I can't believe that this guy who's just getting like, look at it. This is his whole round. If we change the number five, you'll see the next is just like chilling out, waiting with a nade. Never really has had to throw the nade because no one's really come to this bomb site. But this this just shows, right? Like Nexus has got a very, very good read on exactly when he should be rotating, what his role is as the player rotating into that A bomb site. And now he might get his first taste of the action here at B. And you don't want to face Nexus at B. If he's racking you on A, imagine what he can do at his site of his choosing. However, Keto actually here dismantles the b-hold forces rotations in from g2 they're very very quick on these rotations and i want to see big exploit that a bit more that's what they're trying to do in this round they've fallen off from b knowing that g2 are going to rotate heavily on the back of losing two players here and this has left hunter for the time being all alone at this a bomb site but big cannot take too long amadek has pushed down the b ramp and has got the information oh. that this side of the map is clear
Yeah, G2 not falling for it. And uh, that's a surprise, and I think it's going to be a surprise to Big as well. But they're holding for it. Keto ready on the flank. And uh, Big, now they might just go back towards B. They've not done a lot of faking in this game. They've really just committed where they end up early. And so it's a surprise to see G2 read into that and get aggressive on B. But a great call nonetheless. However, this one from Big is going to be the round winner. Tizian has sat in middle this entire round. He hasn't moved. And now he's finally going to be able to cut off these rotations from A if he hits his timing. Or he can come in late and lurk. Now he can't lurk because he's given away his position, but Kenny doesn't care. He's focused on the bomb site. He's focused on the objective at hand with a missed shot and Santaris with the cover. Big with 10 seconds stick the plant and Hunter might just want to save G2. They've got a bit of money on two players here, but other than that, it's going to have to be uh, Hunter getting away with a gun. Big, building into this one, finding a third round. And that's so important, Harry, because I won't lie, this Vita really scares me for big in this series. Because, no, you know, not only this first map that the G2 have proven they, they really like and they've always gone for, even though, you know, it is going to be um, uh, their pick. The, the follow-up is one that big picked, right? Nuke. Now, that's a map G2 16-5 them on just the other day in this upper bracket. So, of course, you, you always can go and uh, look back at the demos and figure out what went wrong. But 16-5, that's not a close game by any means. So there's a world, there is a world where Big get too owed in this BO5 thanks to that map advantage. The the, the, where, where I think this series gets exciting and why I hope that Big can deliver is it's like when you look at these final maps of Dust 2 and Mirage, I think that is where the, uh, the, the gameplay gets very, very exciting. Because like, while Dust 2 is a map that G2 pick into a hell of a lot, it's one that we know they've started to struggle on as of late. And for Big, I, I absolutely love them on Dust 2. I especially love Searson on Dust 2, right? Like he just feels so comfortable on that map. Awesome. And I, I, I want to see the Kenny S. Searson head-to-head orc battle on dust and to do that g2 cannot 2-0 the opening of this series or else we'll never even get to see it so come on big do it for me if you're not going to do it for yourselves <laughs> yeah uh you know obviously nexa picked dust two so we know he's going to lose it because that goes hand in hand whoever picks dust two loses dust two we all know that so yeah there's always that in your back pocket for big but like you said we need to get there and right now we are not getting there a g2 are in control but that could come to a very quick close as big if they win this round they're going to break g2's money hunter going for the jump to punish amanek earlier could almost be a bait right big are going to see that they're going to think it's amanek but where is amanek no he's pushed down he's ready and waiting the only man with utility though can't afford to pull a grenade out he's got to fight for his life and he has at least found one pushing aggressively though and taps and was ready hunter can't afford to play aggressive he's going to go for it flashed up by his teammate as actually dodging uh, Flash from Tabson rather which blinds Keto. Hunter will take the kill every day of the week and fall back with an advantage. Oh, Tizzy, you don't want to slow peek this. That is certain death. Kenny has just gone round the corner, so you because Ian is given a bit of room and Searson spots this double short side take. However, Nexa, oh. he's pushed the smoke. He shut everyone down back in the site. Now, Nexa's on the bomb, but he doesn't have a kit. However, Tizian, not even beginning a rotation. Oh, uh, Nexa got off the bomb. You cool? G2. G2? No, yeah, yeah, not come on. I, I get nervous. Like, you know, I, I don't like watching you guys with bombs. I'll be honest. <laughs> Luckily enough, Tizian isn't going for it. <laughs> oh, that got Why? worried for me. Why, for Harry? There. <laughs> They, they defuse like seven of the 10 seconds and then he got off it like, oh. Next oh. is like one second left on the 10 second defuse. <laughs> and then it's like, all right, guys, all right, hang on. Hunter, you get it, you get it. Yeah, G2 don't make it easy for themselves when they do things like that, but they do luckily stick the bomb and I'm surprised to see Tizian doesn't go for it, man. He, he had a chance to, you know, make it work and Tizian could have dropped him. So really shocked uh, that, that Tizian doesn't give that one on three a go by any means. He's actually a really good clutch player uh, that we've seen from, from Tizian, but right now two and 10, having a slow start. He is playing the solo mid lurk versus Kenny, which is not a fun role to be in, but Big want to help him out. Double nades onto Kenny, put him low, but he puts Tizian out of production, down two and 11. Big, they do have Tabson here. He could find a timing, but he's losing teammates, falling like flies. Searson's gone as well, and now Tabson's taking the route to Jax. He does get the trade, but that position's been given away. And uh, G2, no big, have mid. Kenny's already here. Oh, does try and cross into the site, and the timing's not great on that for Kenny. Keto's followed up with a frag onto Nexa, and suddenly. Man advantage for big. However, this bomb is rotating in through ramp and Amanek, he could steal this whole round away. However, you ain't sneaking past Tabson. He's ready 
for that flank. Hunter might be forced into another one of these saves. 1v3. And he's already backing out of the round. Big. They're going to get themselves a fourth here and now. I wonder why Kenny's orb is. It's actually in the site, isn't it? So not attainable for Hunter. And yeah, that's going to be a nice round from Big. It could have gone choppy there, Harry. Tabson, after he trades in middle, after he gets a kill to Jax, the bomb gets spotted from that fight. And Tabson, he's alone in mid. Big have two B ramp players. So very smart that Tabson backs up there and, and goes back through T4 and you know, reads into Amanek's position. But there's a world where, where G2 can even you know pinch Tabson in mid from that A site and get the bomb under their control. So... Nice rotate from Tabson, smart as always, gets the AWP as well for Sears, and that's a big pickup. It's something that Big have not been able to afford a whole lot in this game, and they're going to lock in a fourth round here, guaranteed. No kill for Hunter or Co. And that's nice, big building into this game, right? We know it can be T-sided, but in a matchup like this, in a, in a game of mind games, and when both teams know what the others like to do, I, I, I think it's something like that goes out the window. You can have both teams have strong CT sides, but uh, you've got to hope big, big can somewhat replicate it right now. And I, the one thing that I think is going to be completely different between these two teams is bigger running a slow, calculated T side. I think we're going to see G2 really test the perimeters, really push aggressively and play fast rounds, especially on Ecos, especially on Force Buys. And that's something that could be a problem for Big, but that's not till the second half. We still have two rounds left of this one. And one of those two rounds is a full Eco from the French. He hasn't seen much love at the B-bomb site. However, this Deeg is thirsting for blood. He spots the players at ramp and now trapped behind the double stack. Going to take the opportunity to retreat on back. And he's got a rotation here from old mate Kenny. Next to get bested in Keto. Ooh, accidentally kills the man back in CT in that spray. Jax gets very, very unfortunate there. On plant found, and Hunter's just going to be saving, like, from the get-go. He was never even interested. He never even left CT. So he's just going to stay here with Amanek alongside him. Big. They'll grab this fifth round. They break down the pistols nice and easy. And now a 6-9 half is uh, is on the cards for Big. And, you know, I feel like that's, that's recoverable, especially when yeah. you think about how one-sided this game looked early on. They have slowly but surely stumbled back to their feet here. Yeah, we're still at the case that we're at halftime and Big have one opening kill to their name, right? It was that one round that they, they won on the A site, but um, yeah, it, you know, it's fine because Big are getting rounds, but that doesn't bode well in the long term if that can be kept up by G2. And it's certainly making Big work for said rounds. Well, this round was their second opening kill at least, so building on the pass. And right now, well, G2 need to look to the present because they've got a full by in the round number 15 in the last of the half. Nice shots from Keto and... Here it is for G2. They've saved this AK on Hunter. He's gotten away with it. So a little bit more to play with here in terms of utility. Kenny's got the Orb Glass as well. He's been very good in middle. Him and Nexa have been leading the scoreboard. Will anyone put a stop to them in this last round? Kenny's holding on to middle. And when you look at it, Searson, you'll see like he's slow but surely creeping forward. It's about to be the clash of the orbs and Kenny comes out on top with the frag onto Searson. Now he's going to boost up Jax in middle and now look to vacate the area. Big setting up for a B play. And once again, Keto delivering an opening kill on this side of the map. And he has rotated into this position and Jax has held his own over in middle. Keto snuck through this smoke and Kenny's got absolutely no idea. He gets blindsided. The bomb plant's now going to come through for Big and a three on three here to end this first half of play. A chance for Big at a sixth round and one that they're looking to take by Storm. Hunter, first man here, has Jackson Co. behind him, ready to move on in. Off retrieved for Amanek. He's going to look to get stuck into this round. But Tizian sticks a bullet in him. Hunter, Ooh. oh, with the spray transfer, gets it down to a 1v1. Zantara is the last man remaining. And Hunter, wow, oh, he lands the shot, the flick up on top of the double stack G2. They're going to grab a 10th and it's Hunter nailing all. We have a great game on our hands for you. It's G2 taking on big. Here's the replay of Hunter that closed out that one on three in the first half, or at least at the end of it. We now head into the second G2's T side and they're leading by five.
big, they bought up three sets of utility on their T-side pistol. Funnily enough, here on the CT pistol, they're buying up three sets of util. Now, what are these big boys got in store for us? We're going to have to wait and see. Joining me is Harry. How's it going? It's going good, man. It's going good, Hugo. And we got a nice pistol round to kickstart this second half of play. G2, they were moving fast up through a ramp. However, if you'll note, you know, if you're very, for the, for the astute observer watching this one from home, you'll note that they're not going up a ramp and they've actually gone back over here towards B. Tizian and Keto are going to have to try and hold the line. These nades have gone in and they found a lot of damage early on. Tapson opens up with a kill. Amanek has gotten deep though. Oh, Ooh, a little flick with the Glock, a little two piece for Amanek. Tizian still here, but Kenny is going to find him. And in the blink of an eye, it's all fallen onto Searson in a 1v3. G2, they've grouped up heavily on the construction side. They uh, didn't have the bomb, so they just had to go back and get that. But, you know, that's a, that's a G2 classic, Searson. Has been allowed to deal with Amanek over here in middle. And now a 1v2 presents itself. He spots Hunter, gets away with damage. Oh, and temporarily, yeah. Kenny gets off the bomb to try and help Hunter out. They're just looking to take this fight and deal with Searson while they know where he is. They don't want to give him even this temporary 1v1 while the bomb is getting planted. Searson... And a chance now as Kenny's plugging in the numbers, but he just can't connect the killing blow. And then Searson nails Kenny. And now just Hunter left to find a 1v1. Searson, he's bought this down. He was 1v3 at the beginning of this round, remember? And he's looking to secure the pistol for big. Hunter toying wow. with him, and he's going to land the shot. The celebration for G2. That pistol round means a hell of a lot. They get the 11-5 start. And they have a chance to continue to build upon this momentum from the first half of play. Oh, I love seeing G2 get hyped, but I got a little scared there, Harry. I'm sure everyone else did. That, that looked like G2, they couldn't make up their mind whether they wanted to rush him down or stick the plant. And it doesn't make it easy for them to make that choice. He keeps going in and out, in and out, and just being a nuisance. But G2 close it. Hunter with a clutch, and he's been quiet this game, but not because he's been having a bad game. Just really hasn't had a, a lot to do, and well, that's a huge round to get uh, G2 back in control. He rounds out the half with the one on three, and he shuts down the pistol round to keep G2's momentum in order. Another force for big. It wasn't successful in the first half. They had AKs in the second round after a pistol loss, but right now G2, they're showing us what they can do in the server. This is such a competitive, such a high level game of Counter-Strike. And G2, the fact they're still bringing a dominant lead here right now is only excellent to them, only more credit. Searson fighting down ramp with a scout. He has got armor here, but there's so many G2 players on the other side. Oh, there's a head getting spotted, but a flashbang pushes it back, and G2 are going to run him down. The pace is good, and there's two kills with no trades. The, uh, the alarm is blaring right now for Big. They're rotating in, they're looking for these kills, and over the top of this smoke, Kenny's going to snipe Keto out of the round. Fatizian and Tabson. This, this might just have to be a save, and it's not a call you're going to love to make, but two on five is also a pretty unwinnable round over at this A bomb site. The thing that would make it even worse is like the fact that you still have these two smokes on Amanek and Kenny. They can just keep uh, like reapplying these standard offensive you know, like wall of smokes to cut off these rotation points. They go aggressive, they're hunting down these players, they find Tizzy, and, and so Tabson, the last man remaining, just trying to get away with his PT-50 and armor. Seems like no one will stop him in his tracks, but not really a saving grace for Big by any means. One that Pistol Kev saved. But right now, the map is the thing that he's saving mostly for Big. 12-5, G2 in full control. We wondered if this would be back and forth. We wondered if it would be competitive. Well, Big Net maybe not even going to have a chance to show us what they've got if G2 blow him out of the water uh, in just a couple of buy rounds. They win a pistol. They win a conversion. Another eco for Big here. It's going to be 13-5 before G2 uh, before Big have money. But I like this idea, flashing a player into mid. The issue is Jax. He's not going to be bright. He's going to be able to help. Amanek needs to fall off the top shelf. And Jax has found two. Amanek finally not flashed and he does take down Zantaras. I don't know how he gets away with that kill. Tizzy and team flashing his mate and Tapson a long way away. Still in a one on five. Not saving this time. Not even staying alive. It's going to be 13 to G2. And uh, this could be three rifle rounds that just close this map in the grand final in a dominant way unless Big have something to show us here in this series.
Yeah, I mean, being real, this could be, you know, like, Big's only full-on rifle round that they get if they don't manage to pick this up. They'll have, like, one more up against 15, but at that point, how much do the rifles even mean, right? It would take so much to get you back into this. So this round here feels like a must-win for Big if they want to keep themselves alive in this map. Next is going to throw Jax up onto this little boost. Keto. Mm, didn't so see him there. Peeking into the site. I've never seen anyone boost on this side. Yeah, no, me either. It's not uncommon to see. Yeah, like, like Keto couldn't even believe it. He was looking. Is that... Is that a Frenchman on the other he, side? He also definitely 100% uh, saw them earlier. Maybe he didn't register it or thought it was just like the, the grate. That grate can be so annoying looking through it from either side. Uh, but, but he 100% saw them. They were in his view without a doubt. So yeah, I, I think he was questioning it, but didn't know what to believe. Didn't know that, that was a boost. And G2, they still show us new little tricks, new little ideas here in the grand final. Big, they're learning. And this is not the place you want to be learning. This is the place you want to be leading. Oh, he's going to nail that shot at the very, very least. And he's put big into a four on three as his A-side play is coming through for G2. Searson, still a nuisance. Gets Ooh. up and above the smoke. Plucks Almanac out of thin air. Does get dropped by Nexa over at the sandbags. And there's still a chance for G2 in this round, but they've got to go fast. There's 15 seconds left. These smokes have faded. And for G2, this means they've got to take straight up gunfights. And they've got to win them as well. Hunter crossing into this site, but Nexa gets shut down. Hunter not able to deliver here in the 1v3. Santares mopping up both the remaining players at the very end of the round. And big, they'll take themselves as six up on the board. Yeah, look at this from Searson, man. The aggression. He's doing exactly what G2 were constantly getting away with. I've never seen a game where people are actually able to jump up on that boost and take shots. It feels like that gets punished every single time in every other matchup. But G2, they were pushing it all the time in the CT side, denying the bomb plants, getting in for retakes, and big, well, they, they give them a taste of their own medicine. Nice work from Searson. Two kills off that spot. And uh, big saved here with a, a single round. Hopefully they can build upon it. Amanek averaged more util damage in the first 10 rounds than Keto averaged total damage in that time. To be honest, it makes sense, right? G2, they had Amanek on the A site on that CT side. He was throwing a lot of grenades. He was throwing a lot of Molotovs. And both of those were finding significant success against the big players. It's the life of a CT side on this map. You are going to be finding a lot of utility damage. And Keto had a bit of a slow start to the game. But a couple of key clutches and entries towards that B site. And he seems to have warmed up. Maybe big can build upon this six rounds. Yeah, this deep ramp smoke's coming in, but G2, oh. they're not like big, right? They're not going to respect this ramp smoke. They push right through it, yeah. and they deal with three players at the top of ramp. Keto and Searson, in, in the blink of an eye, it feels like, are left in a two-on-four. And now this is where G2 slow down. You want to know why? Because they're gremlins, man. They are just disgusting. They get these opening kills, and now, now they pump the brakes. And they, they just kind of wait, right? They know that Big are the ones feeling the pressure here. They're up against 13 rounds. What would be a 14th if this goes in favor of G2? They're at a significant man disadvantage. They've got no information. And so they know that if anyone's going to be desperate to make plays here, it's very much Keto and Searson. And these two have already fallen off of A. They've already given up the round. They're falling off to go and save. So this one looks dead to rights for G2. Yeah, luckily so, because that smoke has a legitimate gap in the middle, quite a big one as well. And yeah, this is great from G2 because it allows, you know, big, not only the time to get aggressive and flank, which is being held by Kenny, but or, or not Kenny, but someone else. But regardless, it, it's, you know, it's big gambling on B. And even though they cleared this out, even though now they know it's an A take, I don't think big even go for this. You're right. They just save. They just sit back. And G2 don't even have to take a fight in this four on two because big over overplay their hand I, I actually I, I take that uh, statement back because i think this is the right call for big right you know if you stick around on a you, you probably lose the round but if you go b there's a chance you catch g2 late rotating and if you don't then that's fine you just save this is honestly all big can really do in this situation but yeah i agree with what you said harry uh, g2 not respecting the smokes i i love that i was waiting for that big never showed us any fast plays in this t side and i don't feel like that's how we see vertigo games often transpire we do like our fast rounds and g2 show us why
quick play through the smokes with flashes, of course, and both those big play players either shot through a smoke, like in here, or fully white, like in here. And there's no way that either of them get away with kills. So G2 immediate advantages, and they trade the third as well. Two rounds away from taking the opening map of this grand final, if you don't count the first, which was, of course, a buy. G2 looking to go 2-0 up in this series, and big, only two rounds in the way to stop them. Amadek was raining flashes around from T-Spawn to blind these ramp players as they try and get set up. And so G2, they've been afforded a lot of ramp control again. It comes over the top from short from big. And that's going to find a bit of damage here. G2 grouped up very, very heavily. Now, one thing to note is looking on the minimap, you'll see a man going by the name of Keto. He's starting to get curious down towards this B ramp and he was actually peeking aggressively down the bottom of it. He never saw anyone, so he might begin a rotation in towards A. However, Kenny, testing Searson in the head-to-head, -head, has once again put G2 a man up early into the round. Yeah, Tapson really wants to force fights, but that smoke could be a bit of a one-way in favor of G2 if he does this. The flash is good, though, and Kenny blinded. There's a trade from Jax. He was on the headshot angle the whole time, and Tapson won't get away with that one. Is it worth it? We'll have to wait and see, because Big now, with three on the A site, G2 are walking back with the bomb. I wonder if they're going to commit to this one. Amanek is considering the flank. Maybe they're just checking for it. Maybe they're holding to see if Big have gone aggressive, but that isn't the case. And G2, well, it's not like this is going to come as a surprise. They're expecting at least two players on A here, if not all three. But again, this is great. G2 goes slow. They go quiet, and that's forced Big to rotate. They have to consider other options. So Keto's in B, and there's only two on this top site that Big will convince a second ago that G2 are hitting. And now they are. But look at the clock. Ticky tick tock. Yeah, there's 10 seconds. G2, they've got to go now or else they don't go at all. Ooh, oh, Amanek delivers the double that was needed. I, I, G2, man, they leave it down to the last possible second. And Amanek has somehow made it possible. Keto, all alone, but he's dealt with the first man. Now just Amanek left to find. He's already gone on his pair to begin this one. Ooh. And he bests Keto at the very, very end. G2, they're going to reach map point here, 15 to 6. Incredibly dominant. I am loving the way they're playing this T side, right? You've already said, like, this is a team that will greet you in the chaos, and they'll feel fine with that. The thing I love is, is they play so aggressive, but they only play so aggressive to get that first kill. And the moment they found it, the moment they're a man up, they just they just wait. Because they know that at this point, like big are the ones who, who are needing to make plays and needing to take peaks that wouldn't otherwise be favorable, right? And in that round there, they just wait for guys like Tabson to come in to try and get those kills. Once again, now they're just holding, right? They know that big aren't gonna have much to offer in this round and they're likely gonna be pushing the boat out in terms of trying to find these openings. Well, it's G2 reaping the rewards. Pearson is this scout over at top ramp, and oh, oh Hunter, so aware. He, he, I don't know how he's ready for Zintares, who was hidden in the aggressive ramp smoke. Hunter has taken this final round by storm, and I say final round because that feels like a guarantee. Tizian in the 1v5, G2 are not going to give him a way back in. And this is an incredibly dominant looking G2 here on Vertigo. They're about to pick up an incredibly one-sided victory to find this first map. This is a G2 who have had four days off to watch and wait and prepare for this.